do you have a favourite scene from the films that you've appeared in? And that includes the non-Guardians movies, like, for example, obviously Avengers uh, Endgame and Infinity War, and may I also add the holiday special, where we've got so much more oh my both God, of you. Yes. That must have been such a respite after the sadness and difficulty of the emotions in this. You've yeah. got to sort of have fun. The uh, holiday special was such a breath of fresh air and just like going completely crazy and just go like full on like weirdo. <laughs> You know, I was like, am I doing too much? She's like, no, 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 it's a holiday special. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to do like Dumb and Dumber in space. Let's do it, you know? Oh, and so much fun. And I get to play with Kevin Bacon. <gasps> you would love to come with us. Hey, where are we going? And I love like when he let me say that, you know, oh, he's an actor, he's disgusting. And it's just, I love that so much. We got Quill the worst gift ever. A disgusting actor. <laughs> this is the worst day of my life! Yeah. Because like a lot of actors take themselves so seriously mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that it's just, I loved saying that. I was like thinking of like all the actors I could think of that take themselves so seriously. I was like, yes! Name <laughs> names, first and last names. And then I was like, Bleh. Actors are repugnant! I know. <laughs> like wanting to puke. I, yeah. It was so funny to shoot. Your salvation is at hand. Be I really love the dance off piece. I thought that was pretty great. Ooh, child, things will get brighter. Listen to these words. And I just remember in my head when we were filming that, it was the most expensive set I'd ever been on. It was this massive outdoor set, Long Cross in England. Bring it down hard. And there were a few dozen, maybe more extras. What are you doing? Dance off, bro. Me and you. All dressed in incredibly complicated <laughs> alien makeups that would have taken them hours, and there are flames 20 feet in the air, and it, you know it's just costing like $20,000 a minute or something like that. <laughs> and you're going. And, and they're like, all right, now dance. And I was like, I think if this, if I might be, I might be blowing this. <laughs> this whole movie is now I'm the one who's just supposed to do, I don't even know how to dance really. Like, I was like, can you give me a choreographer? He's like, no, just dance. I was like, oh God, I forgot that the scene was coming up. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Dance off, bro. Me versus you. It's on. But we made it work, you know? We just went for it. I just went it for was it. so great. And so I'm very grateful that it worked. <laughs> News just in. You smashed it. That was oh, good job. Good thanks, job. Buddy. I've talked to Karen before about lines that sort of followed you around mm -hmm. and obviously not ripe. Oh, yeah. So it's still going <laughs> strong, by the way. Well, hello, boys. Still going strong. <laughs> Every time you eat any fruit, people will go. It's not ripe. <laughs> it's not ripe. I'm imagining Krabby Puppy. Yes. That's a big one for you, right? <laughs> the Krabby Puppy is so cute. He makes me want to die. But also had to like, I don't know what it meant because I'm French, so I'm like, what is a crabby puppy? Is it a puppy that looks like a crab? For me, it's like what I imagined in my head. It was like, crabby puppy, cute. <laughs> I'm Groot. Yeah, you said that. I am Groot. All the time. All the time. I am Groot. I know who you are already! Said with love, but all the time. Yes, yeah. all the time. <laughs> I get that, I get that. What the hell? Going way back, Peter Serafinowicz's what a bunch, what of, a a bunch holes. of a holes. What a bunch of a holes. <laughs> Which Peter didn't want to say. Did he not? No. He says, shouldn't I say assholes? I'm like, no, no, it's, it's funny if he says a holes. It's just like still ridiculous. You're in a formal suit. Yeah. Look, it makes sense that you're muting yourself slightly. Yeah. And there's one in this film, which I hope you don't mind me bringing up, which is extraordinary phallus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you extraordinary phallus. So. I was like, I'm <laughs> writing that down. I am writing that down. <laughs> God, it's fun to play with Wolf Pop Poulter, isn't it? He's yeah, just, he's a great guy. You know, he's such a fun guy. Just a good time. Do you have a memorable bit of direction from James? I mean, for me, he created my whole character with one single note, which was on my first day of filming, I came in, I was doing my generic villain thing, and then he was like, let's mix this up, let's try something else. Um, speak like Marilyn Monroe slash Clint Eastwood. Try that. And then it created the entire character. Thanks, Dan. 
Sounds fair. The voice, it informed the way I moved. This is one fight you won't win. Just started slinking around more. Let's head to the kiln. That is a piece of direction that has that is the best I've ever heard. Karen, that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> My mind's blown. I know. Oh, he's a bit good, isn't he? Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's pretty good. <laughs> the one thing I remember is talking to Chris Pratt when he had little baby Groot on him and to think about his son, Jack. And the minute I said that, uh, Chris was looking down. He just got these tears in his eyes because he loves Jack so much. And that's about the only direction I ever remember giving. Besides, you know, going up to Chris and going, just don't, don't, don't suck this time. Do it, <laughs> Do it again, but suck less. What about cracking up? Because I get the impression you guys are a tight family and you'll find any excuse to make each other laugh. <laughs> <laughs> this man seems like the biggest culprit in terms of- All the time. Making other people break. Uh, All the time. I personally control half the DNA by doing something I call doinking. <laughs> well, here's the one thing. Every time he walks in to, to the set, he's like, it's showtime. <laughs> all the time. So you hear this country accent. <laughs> you see this corn fed, beautiful boy walking. He's like, it's showtime. <laughs> and you could have been having the hardest morning because you woke up at three. You're going, you're doing three hours of makeup. But Chris Pratt just rolled down to set. Like, so then all of a sudden, like, it just, it's infectious. Aww, but then nice. you'll see him, like, as James is establishing what we're going to be doing in the scene, you'll see his eyeballs, like, moving, like, <laughs> you just do one, you just always, like, and I'm like, oh, he's cooking up a line or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he'll say something, and it's hilarious. Aww. Showtime, a-holes. Do you have lines in the movie that you know are yours? Because James has a tight script, but I think, in this, there's at least a few lines that were, like uh, one of the lines when we were improving about, that we improved in a fun run was Karen's eyes. Whoever it was that you were in love with, it sounds more like her. Her? That's Do not bring me into this. Don't even. <laughs> I turned to her and I said, you have, I just never noticed how, how black they were. Knock it off! What? It's usually me improvising and then James improvising behind behind the monitor what the other character said. So like he came up with what Nebula would say, which was, they were the result of my father torturing me. And I was like, and then I improved. Well, well. you picked a very pretty set. <laughs> <laughs> and then made it in the, in the trailer. I just never noticed how black your eyes were. They were replaced by my father as a method of torture. He, he picked a pretty set. You have to at one point, I think, as Nebula Karen, carry Chris Pratt. I do. <laughs> How does, I mean... I've been working out. <laughs> this is no shade to Chris. Okay, I, so, okay, I'll come clean. It's not Chris. It was a mannequin that they made. But it was so lifelike. It was it, so the thing well had done. Pores, it was so, so, so creepy. Like little hairs, It felt everything. like it was just a dead version of him. It looked like him, it was or him. Or a sleep, for, a sleep yeah. version of him. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it had to be like locked in a, in, in a space where like no one goes because it could have been used in like weird ways, you know? <laughs> <laughs> when she said this before, she described it as dark purposes, which I thought was I the mean, funniest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, like, ever could be used for dark deeds. purposes. <laughs> I mean, my sacred mission is to create the perfect society. He didn't want to make things perfect. He just hated things the way they are. How long ago did you first have the concept of expanding upon Rocket's backstory and bringing us this sort of body horror, Lovecraftian nightmare that was his childhood, his young existence? Yeah. Well, the beautiful thing is he did have those things, but he also had this really wonderful group of friends. So to him, you know, part of his childhood was really good. Someday I'm going to make great machines that fly. And me and my friends are going to go flying together into the forever and beautiful sky. Lila, and Teefs, and Floor, and me. Rocket. Yeah, that was from the beginning. That was from the very beginning. Rocket. That was the thing that, when they talked to me about doing Guardians, and I was like, I don't know, it seemed like Bugs Bunny in the middle of the Avengers. <laughs> I'm like, I, this is gonna be goofy. Um, but it was like, okay, if there is a talking raccoon and he is a part of this group, how would he be real? And 
as soon as that started, then that exploded everything for me. That was what started it all. And I was in the car, and I was like, oh, God, he's the saddest creature in the entire universe. And that was the story. We were always searching for a family until we found each other. Let's give the galaxy something to remember us by. I can say I've never quite had a love affair with any character that, as I have with Rocket. And the hardest thing for me mm -hmm. is you know, moving on from him because he's the hardest thing for me to say goodbye to because that's who, uh, that's who I've seen this world through. We have been running our whole lives. Pete, I'm done running. Really big question, but I have to ask it. We're at the third movie now. It's the end of an era. Why do you think the Guardians movies have been such a success? I know the simple quick answer is James Gunn. James Gunn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm but care you to elaborate? Yeah, I think he puts so much of himself into every character, and it just sort of really humanizes all of these alien characters that I think everybody can connect to them in some way, and he gives it so much weight and care, every single character, yeah. that you're like, these are like fun popcorn movies, but you're also getting like really deeply cathartic emotional experiences. Yeah, you yeah. just care about every character. Why are you doing this? I'm crying over a tree. Why? Okay. Yeah, if anything, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, you're remembering exactly. the first movie when he says, we are Groot. I mean, uh, I just, even thinking about it now, I could cry. Yeah. We are Groot. It's just like, and it's, yeah, it's a talking tree. What? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I think the music, the needle drop moments of sentimental music, music is such a huge yes, part of, music. of causing a stir of emotions in people's hearts. It's not time to make a change. Just relax, take it easy. Epic vistas, mm. beautiful scenery, color. How can I try to explain? We treat the characters real. We are sincere, and I completely love those characters. Yeah! And then humor, the humor, the the tone. The humor, my God. The tone is is the best. something special. So the minute you feel moved by the emotional through line of these very human aliens, you get sideswept by a really hilarious, punchy comment or plucky attitude or something silly like a, a vomiting baby tree. What about the end? If we can discuss the fact that this is maybe not a franchise that's going to go on forever. How you feel? What? Huh? Don't talk like that. How do you feel about the idea of James Gunn and you guys not necessarily being part of the same gang? I'm against it. I'm against it. It's sad because we, you know it's such a beautiful story. We mm -hmm. love our characters and we love you know playing together. But mm -hmm. but all things must come to an end. Yeah, it's just it's just it's how James Gunn imagined it. You know the 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 end of the trilogy. So yeah, you know we respect it. that. Guys, thank you so much for these movies because. It's been an adventure. Oh. We've been on a real ride and you've made us cry. Thank you so much. Quite a few times. James, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for this, thank you for this film, thank you. Thanks man, I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my radio on movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum. <laughs>